Hello. This week, the National Football Museum is hosting lots of talks and storytelling from some brilliant children's authors for their annual Children's Football Writing Festival. Hello, I'm Eve Ainsworth. I'm delighted to be part of this. And I'm author of Kicking Off, this book here, which is first in a series about the Dick Kerr girls football team, which was a real life football team, female football team, that started um, in 1918 during World War One, and they were trailblazers. They did some absolutely amazing things during some really difficult times when it was very, very hard for women to play football. Um, and actually not a lot of people know about them, even though they were amazing, um, extraordinarily talented female football players. So I really think we need to get to know and talk about the Dick Kerr girls more. So this is the first book in my series. Um, and welcome to my children's football writing festival talk. Uh, I love, personally, I love reading about football and I find reading about football really fun because I find it action packed, um, because I personally love football myself. I find it very relatable. It's something that I instantly recognize and I can get engrossed in and I can really get behind the characters and believe in them. Um, and I also like it because it's a lot of drama and it can be very, um, lots of um, actions and thrills and things to keep me engrossed. And I think any fans of sport um, or any fans of drama really can love a football book. Um, I also think that a book like this, which is based on historical fact, um, can be liked by whole genres of people, people that like lots of genres, um, because this is a true life story. It's based on true life events, you know, and these women did some amazing, amazing things. Um, so I think that this brings an interesting spiel to things. So if you like history, if you like true life events, then books such as mine can also be really interesting and fun to read. Um, I'm going to read now a short excerpt of my book and this is quite early on in the book that I'm going to focus on which is when the girls are in the factory where they worked, the Dick Kerr factory which is where they got their name, Dick Kerr Girls and um, lots of girls at that time were working in factories during World War I doing work to help the war effort and a lot of the men were away fighting but some boys were still staying behind, some of the apprentices, some of the younger boys, or those that were too proud to work, to, to go to war. So there were some boys still left behind, and these boys are challenging the girls in break time to play some football, and they're actually in a cloakroom setting. So um, if you imagine a cloakroom at school, it's quite long and narrow, and there's a window right at the top that's open, and the boys are challenging the girls to get the football through a very narrow window. So this is where I'm basing it. And if you can imagine, the boys aren't very keen on the girls playing football either. So this is where we are in the book. So George is speaking and George is one of the boys who doesn't think girls should be playing. What is it with you girls? You get a job in a man's factory and suddenly you start thinking you know how to play a man's sport. He snorted loudly and his gaggle of male friends sniggered in response. I almost feel sorry for you. Grace, and she's one of the main Dick Kerr players, amazing player, did not seem phased. She simply straightened her shoulders a little and looked at George straight in the eye. Flo, another amazing player, drew a breath. Here we go, she muttered. The other women in the room had stopped chatting now. Everyone was interested in this showdown. I even heard someone whisper, you shouldn't say that. Not to Grace, she'll never let you forget it. I don't think I can play. I know I can play, she said. I could feel the glow inside myself, like a bunch of coals had been set alight inside my stomach. I'd never met anyone like Grace before. There was a pause, just a brief one. Then Harry scoffed, OK, Grace, if you say so. Yes, I say so, and I'll prove it. Pass me that tatty thing you dare to call a ball. He hesitated and then passed the ball to Grace's booted feet. This should be interested, he said, turning to his group. Let's see what tricks this girl can perform. With any luck, she'll end up flat on her backside. The boys sniggered again. Grace stared at him for a moment and then smiled. The expression seemed to light up her entire face. Easing up her long skirt, she moved the ball to the other side of the cloakroom opposite the open window. I bet I can drive this ball clear through the gap, she said. Harry shrugged. You can try. That's some distance, lass. It's not as easy as you looks. You need to get some loft on that ball. I'd like to see you try. Do you think I can do it? 
grey sauce. So what I'd like you to do for your writing exercise is I'd like you to carry on this chapter. I want you to tell me if you think that Grey succeeded, did she get the ball through the open window? Did the other girls succeed? So we've got other characters there, I've got Flo and I've got Hetty who are watching. Did they manage to get the ball through? Did the boys, did George manage to do it? So did the boys win or did the girls win the challenge? And how did they feel? And how did the chapter end? Did the girls want to carry on playing football? Did the boys support them in the end? You tell me what you think happened. It'll be really interesting to see and to see how you can get those emotions into the chapter as well. I want to know what the girls and the boys are thinking and feeling as they're challenging each other, depending on which way you go. Whether the boys win or the girls win, I want those emotions in there and those feelings in there. Um, good luck. Be sure to share how you get on with us on social media. And please feel free to include your Twitter handle and at Football Museum as well in the, in your, um, when you share. You can find out more about the Children's Football Writing Festival and all the other activities that are happening at nationalfootballmuseum.com. We hope, we really hope to be running the main festival at the museum later on in the year. That's the, that's the idea, so fingers crossed. And we look forward to welcoming you all then. But in the meantime, good luck and stay safe. Take care.